Welcome everybody once again to your favorite character shoot. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me just start this. <laughs> Leave that in, man. Leave that yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome everyone to your YouTube channel, Catalet Ministry. We will bring you the fire of the faith. And today to share that fire of the faith, I have a huge brother of mine. We only met, you know, online. I mean, how else? All the way from Iowa, all the way to Florida. It's a long of a drive. So right here, I have a huge brother that I consider myself with him, Keith Nestor. How are you, my brother? I am doing great, man. I'm so happy to be able to talk to you. Yeah, I remember the first time I interviewed you. It was a long and time I ago. Interview you. I don't say what? That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Oh, yes. It was more than, I think it was, I don't even remember. <laughs> it's been more than a year. Yet. More than a year. I remember, I yeah. think you had like 8,000 subscribers on YouTube or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. yeah. That was a long time and, ago. And I was like, what? A person pastor? Speaking about the Catholic faith this way, I need to get to get to know this guy. And it was a pleasant time with you. And you just keep sharing the faith in such a way that it helps me as well as a Catholic, credit Catholic for that matter, to get in love with the faith in Jesus. And today I want to I wanted to bring you back again because you're still, you know, doing the work. You're still doing the work. And I'm so happy, so glad that you're doing that because you're getting so many people closer to Christ, closer to the Holy and Apostolic and Catholic Church. And, you know, like, how, how's it been for you? Now you're being Catholic for, what, five years, is it? Yeah, yeah, I just had my five-year anniversary in the beginning of October. And I'll tell you, it's been really hard and really amazing at the same time. And I wouldn't change a thing. I, I wonder, what's that that is really hard? I wonder, I mean, why not? Why not ask? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you the, the hard part about be, there's there's a few things about it that I consider to be hard. And actually, believe it or not, I made a video about this. I recorded it and then I didn't even upload it because I deleted it. I was like, nope, I'm not posting that because I didn't want to come across as being whiny right. about it or complaining. And I was afraid that it would come across that way. But I will tell you some of the things, some of the ideas I had in there about what the hard parts of being Catholic. And I've talked about some of this stuff before in other videos, but the first thing I would say that makes it hard to be Catholic is that you never feel like you've ever like grasped it. You know what I mean? Like, cause there's always so much to learn, right. so much to experience. You can never be a master of it. Right? right. And, and, and as men, I think, especially we want to have that sense of accomplishment of like, okay, I wanted to learn about Catholicism. I want to be Catholic. <clears throat> I read the books. I did the things. I prayed the prayers. I got this. But every every time you turn around, there's something new to learn, something new to experience, something new to that that you never even thought of before. So that's one of the things about. It. I guess the other thing about it is, um, there's there's so much holiness and reverence in Catholicism that it oftentimes shines a spotlight on your own, um, on your own sinfulness and your own, uh, you just, you just become so aware of how far you have to go right. in your, in your sanctification. And that's hard versus like the kind of faith where everyone just says, Oh, it's just God's grace. doesn't matter what you do. It's all good. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't worry about it. In Catholicism. There's this standard of, of holiness and you know, we have these heroes of our faith that are these these men and women that are saints that we look up to them. Or it's like, how in the world did they do that? I'm reading this book right now about St. Francis of Assisi and reading about his life. This guy was crazy. He was <laughs> he was so holy. And I look at that. And I'm like, I could never do that. So there's that also that element of feeling like you can, you know, never really truly live up to it. So and, yeah. and just the other thing about, I think, dealing with so many people who you want to have like even Christian fellowship with that just hate your guts because you're Catholic, you know, and, and that's just, that's just a part of life. I, I've learned that there are so many people out there who call themselves Christians who are fine with anything else you could ever possibly be except Catholic. <laughs> right. You, know, you could be, you could be like, a Muslim, you can be a Jew, but not a Catholic. Yeah. And that's hard because, you know, we, 
we're not we're not here trying to you know beat up on people. We're just trying to love Jesus and and uh, to constantly be, you know, fighting that battle. It can get tough sometimes. Yeah, it is. It is. I feel you. I think those are rude things that you said there, and I think they resonate with a lot of people. And and at least the first one with me. But but to me, I I came in a path where I was like, I'm just in awe of so much beauty and and things that. I know even if whenever I die, whenever God wills that I die, or allows it for that matter, um, I know that even when I die, I'm not going to be able to have the full fullness within my, myself and my, my experiences or the things that I read, right? And I think for me, it's like something beautiful out of that because it's like, of course, I mean, not even God, right? Just like the saying goes, right? It would be stupid for you to think that you're going to understand God 100% because if not, you'd be trying to be God, you know? Yeah. Uh, so to me, it's so beautiful. And I think uh, it was 2019, uh, 2019. Yeah, no, 2020th. Uh, I was talking to a priest about it and t talking to him about like how beautiful is your faith that there's never an ending of knowledge and, and learning and experiences. And that's such a huge thing. I think for us is. As human beings, we're seeking for something greater than ourselves. And within the Catholic faith, you can kind of see that, like in real words. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so funny because this relates to something that happened to me yesterday. I am a catechist. So I was giving catechism in my parish where I am a youth minister. And a crack addict um, showed up on the door. I didn't oh, buy wow. the man because he was a young guy. I didn't know he was a crack addict, but I, I noticed he was weird. It was something weird, but he asked if he could come in, you know. I didn't see anything like could harm us or whatever. So I brought him in. And one of the things out of 40 minutes talk that we have with him, mainly me, was that he was he did he didn't know what he was seeking for for what he was seeking for, but he was looking for something. And he said yeah. that he wants to to fight for something greater than himself. And when I asked him, what if that what you're looking for, it is God? And that's a great question. You'd be like, yeah, that, that's it, right? But the answer just, it, it broke my heart because mm. he said, I don't want that to be God. Oh, man. Wow. That was tough. And, and I never had such a difficult conversation such as this one. And he said, what is it that you don't, that, that you know about God that you wish not to get to know God or to or for that to be God? And he said, well, and, and I'm not going to say everything because, you know, I'll be talking too much about it. But he says so many things that other people told him about God. Mm. So that's a reality that we're facing in the world where they hearing things about God that they're even true. And they, be, they start believing these lies. And then they just kind of unknowingly become enemies of God kind of way. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway. Anyway, that was a little bit there, but it is what it is, man. Uh, <laughs> Keith, thank you for, for being honest and just being raw. I, I love that of you. Let me ask you, tell me about this new book that you just come out this year. Oh, and yeah. I haven't purchased it, I, I'll be honest with you, but I read here and there everything that you, you said about it, and, and I think it's amazing. So tell us about it. Well, it's called Unpacking the Mysteries of the Rosary, Connecting the Spiritual Fruits to Your Daily Life. And basically this book is an outgrowth of our daily live streams that we've been doing since March 18th, 2020, praying the rosary every day on my channel. And that has turned into just this incredible, you know, ministry. And I had, um, when I first started praying the rosary, the biggest thing I was worried about was that it would become like this mechanical robotic thing that didn't have any heart into it. Right. So I was very conscious of that. And the thing to me that keeps that from happening is if you really meditate on the mysteries. So if you really enter into what's going on with the mysteries, then that's gonna help you to keep your mind focused. So as we were doing the rosary on my channel, I just started like giving these brief, you know, minute or less meditations, reflections on the mysteries. And people started saying, wow, that's really helping me to, to enter into this prayer time. Well, right. one, one person invited me to come to their parish and give a, a talk on the mysteries of the rosary. So I started putting together this talk and I quickly realized as I started like digging into this stuff to, to create a talk, I'm like, this talk's going to be two hours. And I was like, this is a really bad talk, but a really, but this would be a great video or a great uh, book. So 
I truncated it down as much as I could, but it was still way too long for this poor parish. Um, they were they were patient with me, but but uh, I remember thinking to myself as I was delivering this talk, I'm like, this is going to be a book. So start working on it, and that's essentially what it is. It's a walk through the rosary, but it's not like a book about the rosary. This is a this is like a guide to praying the rosary, but not like here's how you pray the rosary. I I just assume you know how to do that. Yeah. This is a book that is going to help you enter in to the mysteries of the rosary and apply these mysteries into your life to help you become holy. Right. Wow. And, and, and I think that's something that I've admired from what you've done because, and, and I've heard about this, right? Like you started this out of love for, you know, like let's stay praying together because of what we're going through the pandemic, right? Now we can say that war, I don't think they're going to scam or whatever that is. But, and, and, and then just became, let's say like a ministry, right? where now you just do this every day and you have yeah. a community. This, this is amazing. And, and, and tell me something. Have you had Protestants that kind of came to you and they found this community and kind of went into conversion type of thing? Yeah, yeah we've, got a, we've got a young woman right now who's been praying with us for over a year and she just entered our CIA. Wow. So, uh, so she started praying the rosary. And yeah, she, she found the rosary CIA. crew on YouTube because so... What we did, I started it on the Keith Nestor YouTube channel. Yeah. And then what happened was I was like, this is kind of a problem because my my regular videos that I'm still making every week and making my podcast and all that stuff, all of that was getting overwhelmed by all these live streams I was doing every day. I saw it. So I was like, I need to make a separate channel just for the Rosary Crew. So I started a new YouTube channel called Rosary Crew with Keith Nestor. Yeah, I saw and it. And it was kind of it was kind of a risk because I didn't know if that was going to flop, if everyone was going to leave my regular channel and just go to the other channel and that was going to be it, you know, and I, but I was like, I don't care. It's not about subscribers or views or all that. This is about what's best for the prayer community. So I, I we started this this separate YouTube channel and, you know, it's it's growing really well. And, and so, yeah, we've got and that, now we're also cross posting onto like five different Facebook pages. Some of them that have over 3 million followers. It's crazy. Like we're cross-posting onto the Catholic Church Facebook page, Pray the Rosary Facebook page, Catholic Prayers Facebook. Like it's nuts. These people that run these pages have said, hey, we love what you're doing. Here's the credentials. Cross-post to our pages. Wow. So we have thousands of people from all over the world every single day praying the rosary now. And then also on this channel, we've done other things too. So we have a 24-7 looping rosary that goes through all the mysteries with beautiful imagery and video clips and 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 all of this stuff and music and it's 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 a beautiful thing and it's on a 24/7 loop so you can literally go in there anytime you want and pray the rosary and there'll be people in there that you can pray with that's uh, amazing yeah, there's a divine mercy chaplain on there and just yeah. yesterday I did a a video of prayers for the souls in purgatory so it's like a it's a bunch of prayers all put together for this Holy Souls in Purgatory. I said to the Rosary crew one day, this is crazy. And when I said, I feel like the Holy Spirit is leading me to do a, a video of just prayers for the souls in Purgatory. Because every Friday, that's what we do. We offer up our intentions yeah. for the souls in Purgatory. I said, but I need you guys to send me the prayers. I don't know what prayers we should we should do. I just know a few. So right. they started emailing me. So I got like over two weeks, I got all these prayers sent to me. And then just a couple of days ago, I just compiled them all and then boom, made a bit last night. We dropped it and, and the premiere was beautiful. Hundreds of people in there just praying and, and crying and listing their intentions. And now that's on there. So that channel is becoming its own little community. And then, of course, my wife and I, we uh, we sold our business a couple of years ago and then um, or the building that we owned that housed the business. And we took took some of the money and we bought a uh, like a Sprinter van RV. Oh yes, yeah, and we call it the Rosary vehicle. I mean that's super creative <laughs> RV. But and and when I get speaking speaking uh, jobs throughout parish missions or whatever, yeah. What I try to do if I can, it's it's sometimes it's not possible, is instead of fly, we yeah. take the Rosary vehicle and then we have a network of people all across the country. We just say, hey, here's where we're going. Here are the dates, and then people say, hey, come here, come here, come here. And then when we stop, we live stream the rosary from wherever they found us to play, whether it's their church, their house, a park, whatever. It doesn't matter. We just show up, live stream, the rosary, and people come out. So 
it's we're 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 seeing this community form, but we're also making these connections. So, yeah. you know, just last Monday, I had a brother from from uh, California who's been praying with us since the very beginning. Wow! And he got a hold of me. He says, "Hey, I'm going to be near you, um, visiting family. Is there any way we can get to get?" So I said, "Absolutely!" So we drove down, prayed the rosary with him and his niece at this beautiful church, and then took him to dinner. We, and so it's like this family is coming together around prayer, and I love that because here's the thing, Edwin. Lots of these people, we have absolutely nothing in common with them from a worldly perspective. Right. right. We're not the same age. We're not the same life stage. We're not in the same kind of social, you know, category or whatever. I mean, yeah. these aren't people that you would normally hang out with together. But because we have the rosary in common and the love for our Lord in common and our faith, we're closer and we have a tighter bond than any of those worldly things could ever produce. So for me, like that's, that's like absolutely incredible. And that's what I've seen as I've been, as I've been Catholic, you know, it's like, that's the vibe, man. When you're Catholic, you walk into any Catholic church anywhere in the world, man, and you're home, you know, that's, that's your family right there. Yeah, man. I, I love, I love so much what you've done with this. And to be honest, I know you feel this way about it. It's totally God. But oh, wow. you 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 took the the decision to do so. I mean, you have free will, and you could you could have done so many other things, right? So many other things that maybe you could have been more wealthier, let's say, stuff like that. And you decided to do this thing. I think this is so much greater than what it could look like. Because what is prayer? I mean, prayer is the center of how we connect with God, and, and praying the rosary is such a powerful weapon, right? Oh, yeah. Every Every saint in the last centuries, right? They talk about how the rosary is that which gets you closer to Jesus and helps you to be holy. I mean, come on. And to pray daily, have so many people coming together in this amazing devotion, which I love, by the way. I love and I try to pray, pray every day. It's just beautiful. And to me, it impacts me so much because um, it's crazy how you come from pro Protestantism You know, not to put a, a bad, you know, thing to that, but, and, and then you just like a lover of the rosary. When you have your current capitalists, when you mention the rosary, they start running. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know I mean? it's true. It's true. But, you know, I, I, when I, when I became Catholic, I wasn't sure what that was going to mean as far as like all these devotions or different things, you know, but I, I remember feeling like I wanted, I, I don't want to become Catholic and then have like walls up to things that are important to Catholic. Like I was like bright eyed. I'm like, okay, I want to do everything. My problem wasn't, I don't want to do that. My problem was I want to do everything, but I learned quickly that you can't do everything. Yeah. Again, it goes back to our first uh, topic of it's hard sometimes because you want to do all this stuff, but you just can't. And, and uh, when I started praying the rosary, I was just using an app on my phone because I didn't know how to do it. Nobody like sat me down and said, here's how you pray the rosary. I just was like, all right, I'll just go on my phone, download an app. And throughout the day, I would pray the rosary. But I'd never led it before. You know, I wasn't qualified to do that. And people would ask me, hey, Keith, will you, you know, come up and lead the rosary? No, I'm not doing that. I'll mess it up. And I knew that, that there, if I messed it up, <clears throat> believe me, there'd be somebody who would call me out on it. So I just I like, know. No, I'm not doing that. I'm the new guy. Yeah. But then when that came up online, there was a person in the chat was like, hey, would you be willing to do that? I thought, okay, there's something going on here because I wasn't even supposed to be there, right? Yeah. Like we were supposed to be on an airplane heading to Mexico on a family vacation that day. Well, right? No way. I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, or it would have been the couple of days before that. I'm sorry. So we were supposed to leave. I think like the 16th of March on, and the, but the pandemic happened. So we didn't go It closed. Yeah. and we thought about it. Like we were, we were close. Like it was, it was kind of one of those things where we could have gone. They hadn't said no traveling at that point in time, but my wife and I looked at each other. We're like, what should we do? And everybody was freaked out because nobody knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to go because I don't want to get stuck down there. Yeah. And so we, we made the decision, the hard decision, to not go on that trip. And we knew it was going to cost us thousands of dollars. We knew it was going to be a huge disappointment. We were going to take our kids. It was going to be like our last big family vacation right. before everybody grows up and moves away. Right. <laughs> and we'd saved for it for years. <clears throat> and it was crushing to say, we 
can't do this. But if I had done that trip, it's crazy. If I had done that trip, I never would have had that live stream on the 17th. And then I never would have started the rosary crew on the 18th. That's a total God thing. Yeah, it is. Something about it when that person, and what another thing that's crazy about it is, so the person in the live chat that came on there is uh, their account is someone I'd never seen before and I never saw again. So, and it wasn't like a person's name. The name of the account was Vibe Check, okay? Which, it's weird. You know, that's just like a random slang term. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, Joe Schmo. It was <laughs> Vibe Check with like an avatar. Hey, Keith, can we pray the Rosary on channel tomorrow? And I'm like, okay. Sure. I've got I've got 24 hours to figure out how I can lead this, you know. <laughs> I can and I'm on my computer so I can have a printout, make sure I don't mess it up. I was terrified, super nervous, and I didn't think anybody was going to even show up, you know. I was like, "All right, I'll do this, but you guys better be here." And the next day, I think it was noon, the next day. You can still see it actually. If you go on my it's on my regular YouTube channel, the Keith Nestor YouTube channel, I have a playlist called Rosary Crew Archives. The yeah. very first Rosary Crew live stream is on there. And you can see I'm like terrified. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm <laughs> messing all the prayers up. I'm just just like, I mean, get me through this thing, right? Yeah. But we kept going, man. And I know that's a God thing. And and it's I'm telling you, man, it has it's not just been like a ministry thing, it's been a life-changing thing, you know? It's really affected me deeply in terms of my relationship with God and my soul. It's like changed my life, man. It's been incredible. Wow. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Uh, and and I think that's that's the beauty to just like kind of let be led by God. You know what I mean? Like sometimes yeah. we're resistant to that to that leading. Uh, like you know, let it just be God. You know, like just follow that that feels to be right and just rationally right. You know, natural law. It's all good, and just go for it. Even though it, we might be like you were like very unsure. You were not ready for it, right? Yeah. I think, I think this is amazing. I think this is how, this is how actually you see that it's truly God's plan. When you didn't plan out for everything, I don't know where, and, and, and took months and months, you know, it feels more natural, right? That just happens and they just, it's being led and sometimes does project, and I want to call it project, bear more fruits and fruits that are, are like, Real fruits, not rotten fruits. Fruits that are in the way of conversion on a daily basis, and, and I think it's amazing. I remember when you started doing this this rosary. I was I was watching along with you and praying along with you because uh, I remember at that moment I was gonna be a, a entrepreneur and, and I was gonna do a, I was gonna be a social media manager for different companies and the companies shut down because of the pandemic. So I ended up doing Uber Eats for about nine months. So all those nine months, wow. I was praying the rosary with you as well, at least like five days a week, <laughs> like Monday yeah. to Friday as I was driving my, my car. And, 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 and I remember it, it, it was it was great. I think one of the things that, that I need to get your book because one of the things is most beautiful about how you lead the prayer of the rosary, it's how you get deep into what we really are reflecting and then just kind of just go for it. You know what I mean? And that helps me so much to kind of also not like also be mindful of what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we're just rumbling words, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 And we're not mindful of what we're doing. And and sometimes some people say, oh, I'll be praying the rosary for so and so much and nothing has happened. I'm like, I think you're praying the wrong way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a wrong way to pray the rosary, right? I don't think this is like, a, like a, oh, it's up to you. I think there's a wrong way to pray the rosary. If you just pray the rosary to say words, you are praying them wrong, right? right. And, and I think that what you're doing, it's huge and it's beautiful. And I'm so grateful that you're doing that for, oh, thank for you, the brother. kingdom. I, I, I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I mean, you kind of mentioned it. It's like, and I've said this before, if your plans are... are if you're able to accomplish your plans in and of yourself, they're not big enough, you know, yeah. like, and here's the thing, God's got to take control. If I would have tried to come up with this crazy idea, there's no way, there's no way I would never have chosen this. <laughs> and I had other things that I've, that I wanted to do in ministry that I have like 
invest. It's crazy. You know, it's like the things that I try to come up with on my own and go, okay, I want to do this. this. Yeah. They, they never work. They but plump. The that just God plops in front of me and says, here's what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know why, but like he blesses them. So it's, it's just like, you know, we, we, we have to learn that lesson that it's so much better to be of the mindset that I'm not here to do things for God. I'm, I'm here to be someone God can do things through. Wow. And I think there's a big difference, right? A lot yeah, of people it is. think a lot of people are like, what can I do for God? I'm going to go do all this stuff for God. Yeah. I just became Catholic. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to do all this stuff for God. I'm going to write books and do all this stuff, you know, and, and a lot of people get this fire of like, I want to do all these things for God. And then they can try it and it doesn't work or they get frustrated or whatever. It's not happened the way they want it to. And it's kind of like, okay, wait a second. Your job isn't to go out and do things for him. Your, your job is to be the vessel. And maybe he wants to do some of those things through you. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's got something different for you. You know, so the, the challenge is to be open and obedient. And it's not like you wake up every morning and God, God says, okay, here's what we're doing today. Sometimes it's just about the day-to-day -day holiness, the day-to-day -day just slugging it out and living your faith. And then when God puts something in front of you and says, hey, this is something I'm, I think you should think about, then you just run with it. And, and here's the problem that we have, though. A lot of us, when we come up against something that we feel like maybe the Lord's calling us to do, we run it through this filter of our own ideas, our own abilities, our own talents or whatever. We go, I can't do that. And that's a mistake. We, we have to let God show us what we're to do not tell him what we will do. You know what I'm saying? And the rosary, you know, I, I get reminded of this all the time because whenever I kind of get ahead of God or stick my neck out a little too far and something bad happens, it's like, okay, wait a second, reel it back in, stick with what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, man, that was deep. It, it touched me. Trust me. I'm going through a process. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. I, still, I, I go through this every day, man. I'm going to say, okay. <laughs> This is amazing, dude. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to ask you real quick. Um, yeah. So changing subjects real quick. Um, now you've been for about, let's say, public ministry two years maybe, uh, I want to say, or what? Yeah, well, over two years. I two started years, right? making videos at the end of 2019. Yeah. 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 Tell me, what ha how's that been for you? How's that? Has that impacted your faith? Has that help you kind of be more arrogant about who you are, the things that you can do? Oh, jeez, no. Or... <laughs> Say what? Not a chance. <laughs> people, you know, that's hilarious because sometimes people are like, oh, Keith, you know, what's it like to have whatever subscribers you have, you know, and this and that? I'm like, dude, that's nothing. Like, seriously, if you think that being in like Catholic YouTube world is some big special celebrity thing or whatever to anybody who's thinking like that, all that is, all that is, is an opportunity to have people yell at you and tell you you're going to hell and you're a heretic. That's all it is, right? I mean, yes, you can have an impact on people. You can do things. I don't mean to say you can't, but you're not going to get rich doing it. You're not going to become, you know, it's, it's people, it's so funny sometimes people will like accuse that, oh, you, you know, you, you convert into Catholicism so you could make money. I'm like, <laughs> Like, or you wrote a book to make money on your conversion. Uh, I, if you if you look at how much money I gave up to do this, right? Versus, I mean, this is not a money making enterprise for crying out loud, not at all. Um, now, so anyway, I don't mean to, I know, and I, but I know some people think like that. They're just like, oh well, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Doing this ministry has been the most humbling thing in my life. And I feel so privileged and honored to get to do it. I never thought I was going to get to. And here's again, this is the, this is the whole part of my story, man. Like that was the toughest part about me becoming Catholic was I'd been a minister for 22 years, man. I'd been in full time Protestant ministry for 20. That's all I ever knew. And professionally anyway. And I loved it. I loved it. That was the hardest part. I got through all of the doctrinal objections and all of the things that that a lot of people struggle with. Like I, I worked through that stuff and then it came down to the question of, okay, Keith, you believe this is true. Are you going to do it? Yeah. And I had to like, what's it going to cost me? Right. It's going to cost me a lot. 
and it wasn't just about the money and the career. It was all, it was about, I love doing ministry. And, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, well, if you're a Protestant pastor, you could just find a way to like become a pastor in a Catholic church. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't work that way, you know, <laughs> or you could be a deacon or you could do what, and, and here's the thing. I personally, I'm not speaking for anybody else. I didn't want any of that because I wanted, I wanted no expectations on the table, right? I wanted to be Catholic and that's all that mattered. And I didn't want there to be any sort of strings attached to that. Like, okay, God, I'm going to become Catholic and I'm going to write books and give talks and, and have a YouTube right. channel, you know? So make all that right. happen, God, like a condition. Yeah. To me, it was about, no, I'm letting all of that go. And I'm just going to be Catholic. So my priest told me like first year, like he said to me, he said, Keith, I'm, I'm going to leave you alone for the first year. And, and like people are going to try to get you to do stuff. People are going to be, you know, like they're going to hear about who you are and they're going to be like, oh, you're a, you were a Protestant pastor. Let's do. He yeah, said, yeah. don't do any of that. Just be Catholic for a year. So I was I settled into that. And when I was like, OK, I'm down for that. And. I just went to mass. I practiced the faith as best I could. I tried to learn. And I was just the, the the guy who was like a sponge soaking it up. I never once thought to myself, how can this ever become a job, you know, or a ministry or anything like that? I want, I was willing to serve in whatever way I needed. I, they needed me, but yeah. I was never like, I'm putting myself out there as some kind of public figure. Yeah. And it was interesting because my wife about, I don't know, it was maybe seven or eight months into my into my being Catholic. You know, I mean, I'm working secular jobs. I'm doing all the, you know, I'm running a business, working another job, working really hard, man. I had to I had to take two jobs to try to make up for the income that I lost in my ministry. And, yeah. you know, it was tough, man. We had I remember my wife said to me one time, she's like, we have exactly two months worth of money left at the rate we're going before we're done. Wow. And I was just like, OK, I don't know what I'm going to do here. And out of nowhere, I got the, I got a second job offer to go, you know, travel around the state of Iowa and do some consulting with photographers. We had a photography business, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that meant, you know, okay, I'm going to have a little more money, but it also meant I was going to be gone 50 hours a week. So, but I praised God for that. I was like, thank God for this opportunity to make some money for my family or whatever. But I never thought to myself, all right, how can I monetize this Catholic stuff or whatever? It was never on my radar, you know? Um, but my wife said to me, she said, Keith, I remember we were, we were on a trip. We were on our, it was our anniversary. We were sitting at a, we were at a vineyard drinking some wine okay. and then we, we were having this conversation and she said, God's not done with you yet. And I said, what do you mean? She's like, when are you going to start using your gifts for ministry again? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm, you don't understand. I'm done. <clears throat> like I'm, I'm Catholic now. I don't do that. I'm done. I just love, and I was cool, man. I was like, I'm, I love going to mass. I love, yeah. I don't need to be the preacher. People say, Oh, do you miss being a pastor? I'm like, Nope, I don't, which was weird because I loved it so much. But what I was experiencing in the church as a Catholic, just as a Catholic dude going to mass, I was so full of grace and, and so filled with joy and, and beauty. And, and, and just like, I was soaking it all up. I'm like, I don't need anything more than this. Like, this was beautiful to me. I'm like, this is, this is home. And I'm not going to be like, well, yeah, but I need X, Y, Z. No, I don't need that. If I need to go work some job someplace, whatever, if we need to be poor, who cares, man? I'm in the church. This is where I need to be. So I wasn't, it wasn't on my radar, man. So anyway, long story short, after the first year was over, I had this, that's when God gave me the idea for this book, you know, the Converts Guide to Roman Catholicism yeah, in the first year yeah. of the church. Like it hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like, I was never going to do that. I was never going to write a book. I was never going to any of that stuff. And out of just, we were, we were coming home. We were in Mejigoria. We were coming home from Mejigoria and we were on the bus heading back to the airport and just out of nowhere, just boom, this idea comes into my brain of this book. It was like in the matrix when it just downloaded. And he's like, I know Kung Fu. I was like, it hit me. And I'm like, I know the book I have to write. Yeah. So I'm still working jobs. I'm doing, but I was like sneaking away, going to a monastery for a few days, writing this book. And then, you know, that came out. I self-published it. Nobody was, nobody put it out for me. I did it all on my own. Yeah. And um, then I was offered an opportunity to 
give a talk in my church. They said, will you come and share your, and it had been, the year was over. My priest said, okay, Keith, it's time for you to start saying yes to stuff. I was like, okay. So I said I would give my testimony at my church and didn't think much of it. You know, I thought, okay, I don't really know a lot of people here. I don't think anybody's really going to come. And I'd been out all day on sales calls with my boss, who was an ex-Catholic, by the way. He's a very <laughs> strong Christian. And he would be like, wow, you're Catholic? You know, and he, and we, he would just grill me all day long. Okay. So we were on the road for like 10 hours that day. And I said, hey, I don't have time to drive you back to the office. It was like an hour from, from my church. I said, I have to go give this talk at my church. I need you to come. And he was like, all right. So, so, so what we do? So he went with me. Yeah. So, so he came, he came to the church and we walked in and there's like 400 people there. It was crazy. It was like packed. And I was like, what is up with this? So I, I gave this talk on my story and thought, okay, that's nice. The next day I went to work and whatever, whatever, a couple of weeks later, they sent me the video file. And, uh, it, by that time, I'd already given another one at a different church, a small little talk, maybe for like 60 people in this little fellowship hall. Yeah. They sent me the video and I just, I didn't have a YouTube channel or nothing like that, but I created one and just dumped them up there and was like, okay, well now they're archived at least. So I don't have to like take up room in my hard drive with these talks. I just, right, right. It. it's going to be there forever, you know, for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you, like you're on YouTube, Edwin, you know how yeah. that's complicated and you have to have the right tags and the right thumbnails and all that, that stuff. Man. First, the, the most, the two most popular videos on my channel, they got none of that. thumbnails that YouTube chose. I didn't make a thumbnail and the description for the first video, my, the one that is my biggest video by far is yeah. the description literally was, I did finally change it about a year ago, but the description literally was Protestant becomes Catholic. <laughs> the end. That was it. No tags, no keywords, no thumbnail, no title, yeah. nothing. Keith Nestor's Catholic Conversion Story. That was it. And I didn't give it a second thought. And then out of nowhere, it was just like, boom, all of these people started contacting me. Man, your your story is 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 changing my life, this and that, you know. And then from there, it just kind of started to snowball and getting the opportunity to go on different people's shows like yours and and and, uh, you know, the journey home was big for me because I had watched that, you know, Marcus Grodi. And I was actually the last person to interview before the pandemic hit, you know, That's one right. of his last interviews because he's retired now. But yeah. Um, and then from there, it's just, you know, it's just be, it's just kind of organically grown into this thing, Edwin, where now this is just what we do. We, we travel, we speak, we create content, we write stuff, we minister to people, yeah. we create community. I mean, it's it's just it's awesome. And, and, and I look at it and I'm just, I thank God. Like I go to adoration every Friday night. And honestly, most of the time that I go there, I'm just like staring at Jesus in the Eucharist. And I'm just saying, thank you. Like, thank you. I can't, I can't even express the gratitude I have to him for what's happening in, in, in our life right now. Because like I said, I, you know, I gave that up and, and it just reminds me of what, you know, when Christ says that he, whoever, whoever has given up Things for me, you know, and he's talking about family relationships, different things, jobs, all that stuff, houses, everything will be paid back, you know, in this life, he says, a hundredfold. And I feel like, I feel like I'm experiencing that, man. I feel like God, it was so hard for me to finally make that move. But I also feel like I had to honor God with the year of doing nothing, you know? Yeah. Being because obedient he, to your pastor. Yeah. And and that's that's been, that's been a theme in my life. I mean, there have been... There have been things that I've I've wanted to do that I've asked my pastor and, you know, I'll say pastors because I have a different one now because our priest that was here with me when I first came to the church, he's been moved. I still okay. consider him one of my priests, though. He's a dear friend of mine. But our new priest that comes in, you know, like I have, there have been things I've wanted to do in ministry that I've asked these men like, hey, I just need your blessing in this if you think it's OK. And I remember there was one particular time where. My priest came back to me and he said, Keith, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't, I don't think you should do that, you know? Yeah. And I could have said, well, I'm doing it anyway, you know? <laughs> but I was like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna submit to your authority um, because it's I, I wanna be a good Catholic, man. I, I, I don't, I got into this because of authority. I'm not gonna like, you know? Yeah. So that, to me, that's a beautiful thing about it. Now I know there are people out there that have had terrible experiences with bad priests and whatever. I haven't, so I'm, I'm fortunate in that, you Praise know, God. they're awesome, but 
Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing all that. Yeah. It's, it's, de it's definitely like I'm generally so happy that what the Lord has done in your life. And I can't stop saying it. I know I've said it so many times, but it's just real, you know. And when I see all this that's happening, that God is doing through you, it just helps me to love God even more. Because yeah. it's yeah. just beautiful things that he's doing in people's life when those people are truly seeking to love him, truly. And, and that's amazing. You know, I, I I had this question for you that now you've been doing this for a while, you know, sharing the like reflections of the gospel and you being a, pa you know, a, a Protestant pastor. I know you need your Bible well. You know, I know you, you learn, read the Bible a lot. And now being a Catholic, right, has the Bible in a way, I want to ask, and I never heard this before, has you now from it's Protestant to Catholic, has the Bible in a way changed perspective for you? How you used to read it before, how you oh, read yeah. it now? Tell me about it. Well, I would say this. There's things in the Bible that make way more sense when you read them through the lens of Catholicism that, I, that you know, now I'm reading them and I was like, oh, how did I not see this? And once you, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. You know, things related to the sacraments, things related to the authority that's passed down to the apostles, things related to things like confession and the Eucharist. So many of those things, just the history of the church, how the disciples gather in Acts 1 and select a, a successor to Judas and how the church functions in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council. I mean, all of these things. I mean, that was huge for me. And and, and so, so it hasn't like changed my outlook of the Bible. It's just it's kind of like unlocked the Bible to me even more to help me see things. I mean, for crying out loud, as, as a Catholic, when you read Luke chapter one with, with the Annunciation, and then you read John chapter 19 at the Mary at the foot of the cross, and then you read Revelation 12, the vision of her, it's just like, wow. Wonderful. You know, you read John two, you see her intercession there at the wedding at Cana. You're just like, that's cool. Why does John put this in here? John himself says at the end of his gospel, he says, there's so many things that could have been written about Jesus. Yeah. But these are the things that are written that you would believe in him and have life in his name. That's the first sign that he performs. Right. And it's, yeah. and it's be at the, at the behest of his, of his mother. Right. So you see these things and you go, Oh, and so to me, it makes more sense now. Um, People, people give me grief all the time. They're like, oh, Catholics, they don't know their Bibles. They don't read their Bibles, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I'm just like, dude, what world do you live in? You know, <laughs> I had some guys today on YouTube was like, oh, well, you know, I was a Catholic, but then I became a Bible believing Christian because I never read the Bible in, in the Catholic Church. I'm like, did you ever go to mass? Because I promise you right now, dude, there's more scripture read at the Catholic mass than there is probably 95 percent of Bible churches. You know, yeah. I used to preach a one hour sermon on two verses, you know, which is <laughs> two verses. fine, fine. Right. It's OK. It's good to do that. Yeah. But you can't act like that's more Bible than, you know, yeah. <laughs> the Old Testament reading, the Psalm, the epistle and the gospel every every yeah. every day. I mean, for crying out loud. So like to <laughs> me, I don't know, like my my biggest one of my, one of my biggest moments, Edwin, in my conversion had to do with that. It was, it was when I went to daily mass for the first time in a long time, I had, I had, I had, you know, rec at the time I was like, okay, I'm going to talk with this priest. I'm starting to think about Catholicism. I go to daily mass and the procession comes in and the deacon's got the gospel book, you know, and he's, yeah. and when I saw that, that like hit me, that was huge. I was like, at the, at that moment, I'm like, wow, I think I'm gonna be Catholic because like, our denomination that I was a part of, the United Methodist denomination, is splintering into a million divisions because they can't understand anything about the Bible. And and it was extremely frustrating. I'm like, look, people, read the Bible. And they're just like, we don't understand it. And and, and then here comes the Catholics with the Bible holding it up like, this is what we do here. This is important. This is our book, you know. So for me, like people are like, oh, well, I'm just a Bible Christian. I'm not a Catholic. I'm like, well, you don't understand anything. <laughs> yeah, but they're speaking out of, they're literally speaking out of ignorance, you know. I just got to pray for these people, man. And and, and, uh, and I think that that's one of the things you've done. I think I love the way that you express Catholicism 
to Protestants and to even Catholics, because so, sometimes Catholics become so toxic. Like, and, and it's a rule thing, and it sucks, because they lose the sight of what the faith is and, and just go on the way, and they look like it's more political than mm. something that is spiritual. Yeah. And that sucks. That sucks because that divides not just the people around you, but your heart. It divides you from God because now you're just paying attention to so many things instead of just be focusing on God in prayer, you know, and just being faithful and service yeah. for the faith. Um, and I know, and I know you, you, um, I think when something uh, started really spiking up a lot, you, you did one video about this whole shenanigans of like TLM and Nova's order, whatever. Oh yeah. And, yeah. And, and that was it. That's it. You don't, you never talk about it anymore, which is great, which is great. And, and, and I, and I love that because I was like, he's doing something not just for getting views. Because I promise you, if you keep doing the rhythm of like the crazy shenanigans of like this versus that. And by the way, I, I attend to TLM. I attend to Latin Mass every Sunday. It's nothing that I'm not a TLM guy, but I don't like that toxicity, you know, like, like hitting hard on things that speaking about it, they're not going to change anything, right? I, I think it's better just to pray and those around you help them, you know, have yeah. them to see things that they don't know about, have them to be more faithful to this church and stuff like that. But, and I love that you kind of like just push that away from you um, because I know you were tempted just like I was to for a while to just keep on going this rhythm of like, what is people looking for about Catholicism? Oh, is this uh, things going on about this versus that? So yeah, I, I applaud you for that. Let me ask you a question. I saw a video right after Cameron Bertuzzi yeah. converted or, or announced that converted uh, in the Pines of Aquinas, Aquinas YouTube channel by Mount Frat. I saw this video and I think it was amazing. I think it was amazing the the those things that you told them to if he watches this. I think he would. He, he, watched, he, would. he left a comment on there. Oh, so he did. I saw that he watched it. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And I think you gave like, amazing, amazing advices. Oh, and I want to ask you, do you believe that um, if there are other Protestants out there that, let's say, they critic Catholicism, do you think, and you, you can decide not to answer this question, by the way, do you think they honestly do not want to accept at some point that Catholicism is true due to their own situation, how who they are at this moment, just like you were 22 years of, yeah. you know, being a pastor, just like Betuzzi being almost all his life being a Protestant. Do you think it has to do with that? Or it's more about like, they truly believe that they're right. I think it's both. I think there are, I think there are certainly people that are in both of those camps. Um, you know, I talked to somebody yesterday who is a pastor in a denomination that I'm very aware of. And this person contacted me and said, I'm in ministry. I'm feeling so called to Catholicism, but I'm terrified. I don't know what to do. Pray for me. I don't know if I can go all the way to Catholicism. I've Stop. talked to so many people who, who were being led to the Catholic church, but there was going to be a big cost to them if they were to go all the way for, they might lose their job. They might have to deal with family members who are going to disown them or be upset with them. And, and there are some people, you know, who have some pretty strong obstacles, particularly if they have issues in their marriage. Yeah. So like if they are married to someone who is divorced or whatever, and there's going to have to be annulments and all of that kind of stuff. I've seen people short circuited by that because they go, wait a minute, I want to become Catholic. Sounds great. I love all of it. I love Mary. I love the Eucharist. I love the Pope, all of that. And then they show up and, the, and then they start filling out the stuff or whatever and it's like, oh yeah, you know, you're you're both divorced. Um, we got to work through that, and then they're just like, oh, well, that's not going to be fun. All right, see you later, and they just check out. Wow. So I think there are people in, in that, but yes, there are, of course there are people who can't quite get there uh, from a from a theological perspective. They have they have objections that they haven't overcome yet, and I understand that. I've I've been in both of those camps. I. I it took me a long time to overcome those objections. I don't want to make make the, anybody think that for me it was just like one day I woke up and was like, oh, yeah, I believe all this stuff. It took a long time. I was pretty – I don't know that I was ever like super anti-Catholic, but I was 
very, very anti me being Catholic. You know, I'm like, no, I can't believe that. That's crazy. You know, I wasn't like all you Catholics are going to hell, but I was certainly like, no, that's not true. Catholicism is not true. That's that's made up. What all of the things I was yeah. like. that, So I can relate to that. So I think there's all different kinds of people out there. And I talk to all of them. That's you know, all, there's all kinds of them, I should say, not every. Yeah, single. yeah. I, I pray for, you know, at least, you know, I don't think it's a bad feeling to kind of or a bad thing to do to pray for a person to become Catholics. I think it, it, it's something I do generally, you know, I like, I, I pray that all, all Protestants at some point become Catholics because to me, I see it this way. It's like, this is the fullness of the faith. Even, even Siri, Google knows who, who founded the Catholic right, church. Right, right. <laughs> and, and like, how am I not going to be generous enough to wish that everybody comes to the true faith, to the, to the fullness of the faith, yeah. to the true church? And, and 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 that's how I go about my life. You know, if somebody tells me like, oh, um, like in my job it will happen where they will tell me, oh, I'm a person. I'm like, oh man, that's crazy. And three days later, I'm like, oh yeah. So so what do you think about this? What do you think about John Six? <laughs> and they're like, oh, what about it? I'm like, oh, you know, like the most important thing for us Catholics is the Eucharist. Do you know anything about that? It's like, yeah, when I because most of these people are Hispanics. I'm in Miami, you know. It's like, yeah, when I used to be a cop like uh, 15 years ago, you know, they talked about it, but I don't know. I'm like, oh, ah. it's like, let, let's talk about it. How about that? Let's talk about it. Let's let's mingle around, you know. And, and I learned that from you, too, because um, at, at some point in my faith in apologetics, I was very, like, dependent. And, yeah. and I learned to be just loving more than anything, you know, to understand that most of the people, I, I want to believe most of the people, and I think it is, are... Protestants because they were born that they were born in the culture in the family that was a Protestant. They didn't choose to be a Protestant, you know what I mean? And, and they never heard anything about Catholicism, for that matter. Just like uh, this guy Cameron, uh, he says, you know, that he really never heard so much about Catholicism until later on, like almost like three, four years ago. So like I, I give so much the you know uh, benefit of doubt to so many people that, that are around me because to me it matters. To me it matters that you come to know the truth of the faith of who Jesus Christ really is and what he really intended for this minute in church. Um, so that's amazing. And I want to ask you one last question. What, what is that that helps you to be on a daily basis faithful to, the, mm. to Christ? And, and what, are, what is the biggest thing that you face that sometimes makes you struggle? And how you combat that? Wow. I think the biggest thing for me that keeps me kind of hopefully on track is the gratitude that I have to the Lord. Um, because, you know, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life and ministry that was really hard. And I just have this sense of, of finally being where I'm supposed to be. I, I, you know, for most of my life, when it came to my faith and church world, I, I never felt like I really fit in. You know, I, I was always kind of like, I never really bought into one particular camp theologically. Well, you know, I would go to churches where some people were reformed, but I never quite was like that. I'd go to some church where people were charismatic. I was never fully quite there. You know, I, I mean, and there was always something missing. And when I became Catholic, it was like, now it, it's there. I see it. So for me, like just the, the the gratitude I have for for God calling me to be Catholic is just powerful, you know, and that's just where I'm at right now with it. You know, as far as struggles go, I think that's a hard question. You know, I have struggles with what does it mean for me to um reach out to other people, but yet at the same time, um, let my witness be enough. One of the verses I've been really, and I can't remember where it's from. It's a proverb. Don't answer a fool according to his folly, right? My natural tendency is to get in the mix with people and argue and debate and fight and all that kind of stuff like that. And, and I had opportunities to do that in the beginning. I, I did a debate believe it or not, 
with uh, a Protestant guy, a Reformed guy. And I kind of liked it, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I know. But at the end of it, I was like, like, he was like, wow, that was intense. We should do that again. I was like, nope, I'm not doing that again. (laughs) And I think the, and it was, here's the reason why, and maybe this will change someday. I I didn't like, I didn't like the way it made me feel to be like, all right, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. It was like a prideful thing, you know, like superior. Can can I get in there without you knowing it? Yeah. Yeah. It was like, oh, but I'm defending the faith. So it's okay. No, it's not okay. Like, it's not okay for, for you to defend the faith and yet at the same time take a higher position than someone else or whatever. And that's just, I'm not speaking for anybody else. I'm just saying that's what happened to me, you know? So, like, staying humble and grounded, like, I have no problems, like, staying humble as far as, like, oh, well, you have a big YouTube channel. You think you're a big rock star. I, no, believe me, that means nothing to me. I don't give a rip about any of that. Like, I'm just, I'm thankful and honored to get to do what I do, but... I'm a, I'm a servant, you know, and, and that's, I don't need anybody to know who I am. Right. So that's great. I'm perfectly content to be, to be me and Jesus. You know, I don't need anything like that, but at the same time, I want to be faithful to what he's called me because I feel like he's, he's entrusted me with a lot and he has just been so generous and kind to me. And I just don't want to let him down. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Total sense, man. Th- thank you for being honest and just being real about it. I appreciate it tons. And, and, and I know and I know the feeling of like, uh, I guess I'm like that too. Like uh, I have this fire, like, yeah, let's just, let's just argue, you know, let's let's get in the argument. Are you right? I'm wrong, you know, and, and I know I, I truly being where you when you said that it kind of feels like it's kind of prideful sometimes. And, and I think it. it Maybe we started in a in a in a good thing, right? With a good purpose, but I don't know where it kind of a pride thing just mingle in and like it pushes you in, like, oh, what am I doing now? Like, what what yeah. am I doing with this, right? That that's that's something that resonates with me, and I think, and I think a, a lot of Catholics out there who are public speaking Catholics sometimes have fallen into that too, and sometimes don't even wake up to the reality. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, that sucks. That sucks in a way. Um, my brother, where can people buy your latest book and your first book, which is a great one for people who are transitioning from Protestantism to Catholicism? Well, my books are available in two different places. Of course, they're on Amazon. So if you just type it in at Amazon, you'll see them both. But my website is down to earth and it's down the number two earth ministry.org. You can find them there as well. Um, and you know, if you Google them, you'll find them. So they're not yeah, hard to get. Yeah. I- um, I'll, I'll put it down here in the description. I will put the link right here to down to down to oh, earth, right? Yes, down to earth ministry. Yeah, yeah, down to earth ministry. Also, can can they book you through there? Like, can they yeah. reach out to you to bring you to the parish? Yeah. So that's that. You know, that's and people sometimes are just like, hey, Keith, when are you going to come to here? When are you going to come to there? What? Come here. Come here. Come there. And I'm just like, I will come wherever I'm booked to come. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm happy to go anywhere, man. I, I'd love to, to go wherever people want to bring me, uh, to give talks or do whatever. Um, that's my favorite thing to do is to go and, yeah. and, uh, be with people. I, I, the YouTube thing is great, yeah. but I'm, I'm a people person, man. I, I want to yeah. like, when I go, it's funny. Cause like when I go to a, a parish mission or whatever, I'm usually the last person there. Like, you know, so, so sometimes <laughs> I go to, to places, like, multiple speakers and I've seen speakers just get like ushered in five seconds before they talk and then they just, boom, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they're off to some other fancy thing yeah. they're doing or whatever, but I'm like, I'm like the first one there and the last one to leave. Cause I want to talk to every single person. I'm like, Hey, whoever's here, they came to this talk. Why yeah. did you come? You know, let's talk. I want, you know, so like I enjoy that being out too, amongst yeah. people and, and with people and getting to know people. So th- th- there's a way to book me there, um, yeah. you know, and uh, w- I have an event coordinator that that deals with all the contracts and fees and all that kind of stuff. And yes, right. there is a fee. You know, some people think, oh, well, you just can come and, you know, we'll give you a slice of pizza and a, and a Coke, <laughs> you know, like, no, I have to, you know, <laughs> there's costs involved. So that's there. That's there, too. But um we we just we're just thankful every time we get a an opportunity to do something like that. That's great. That's, That's great, man. I I I uh, I'm so happy that you're able to do this and help other people to just love Jesus 
in a raw way, like just real, just real, being real with Jesus. Thank you so much, bro. This this was a great talk. Oh, thanks um, for having I, me. Dude. It's good to I, talk to you, man. You're you're a fiery guy too. I love that. <laughs> I love that too from you, man. That that's why I couldn't wait to get you back on here and just share the faith and just being real. You know, I love Amen. that thing. Oh man, thank you so much again, guys. Please go to Keith Nestor. Go subscribe. Go and pray the rosary daily with him if you can. Join the crew. It's no waste. Join the crew and don't forget to that. go. Yeah, <laughs> which is no waste. <laughs> <laughs> and you already know subscribe to our channel we're putting everything in here that we can as much as we can you know we have so much in our hands so we can do so little so please just pray for us more than anything and we'll see you in the next one god bless y'all don't forget to pray the rosary daily